Hello and welcome. I'm joined on a cold winter morning at the India Today Business Today studios of the World Economic Forum at Davos by India's largest software exporter, the Chief Executive and Managing Director of Tata Consultancy, K. Krithivasan. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning, Rahul. Fabulous having you, Thank you. with Thanks us early this here. morning. You know, there's so much buzz and talk about artificial intelligence and the impact this is having on the Indian IT sector. <coughs> So I thought this would be a great opportunity for you to take everyone watching at this time through you know, how you've been able to leverage AI on the workflow in TCS at this moment and your outlook from here on. Fantastic. Once again, good morning. Okay, the way we look at uh, AI is a very, very defining and uh, groundbreaking, path-breaking technology. And uh, the applications are myriad, like uh, right from software, en software engineering is only one part of it and uh, what you can do with this technology in creating new products, new services, improving customer experience, immense possibilities. So, like I said, we do approach it from two, uh, two three angles. One is, how do we train all our associates, they be ready for providing services in the, uh, in artificial intelligence to our customers. So, almost 500,000 of our associates, we have trained them, we have created a sandbox where they can experiment, dirty their hands, learn and be comfortable with this technology. Uh, second, you know that we are very industry focused organization. Each one of our industry groups, they are looking at the value chains in that industry, looking at where all uh, generative AI could be a major advantage, either in terms of bringing more efficiency, productivity, or new products and service. So they are taking that to our customers, saying that this is what we can do. The third, you asked about what do we do internally. There are some very uh, immediate low-hanging fruits, as they call, for, for instance, HR applications, like how do you recruit, how do you interview, and uh, employee welfare, like when they have a question on if, uh, what is my leave balance, or what course I should be studying, or if I studied a course, how well I have done. So, a lot well, of so Spend some time talking to us about how uh, recruitment <coughs> is changing. You know, you're saying how we recruit, uh, how we upscale, that's changing as a result of AI. So, take us through some of the changes you've been able to make internally. First is like the CV scanning, right? You have a job description. Even the job description nowadays can be written through, a, through artificial intelligence. Somebody gives a high level information based on the requirement they have uh, with them. So, you can write a nice JD using artificial intelligence. Now you publish the job description, you get the CVs. Now again you can scan the CVs and see where is the best match. And you can also uh, give, get the artificial intelligence to tell you which are the areas you find there is a weakness, where there is a strength, what type of questions, which areas you can ask the questions. Now the person answers the questions, you are able to evaluate. But I am not saying that anywhere we will take the human out of the loop. I don't think we are ready to take human out of the loop. This is more like an assist and augment a human being in what they are doing in a more efficient way and probably in a more uh, confident and comfort, assured way. Okay, it provides that assurance. So now you do the interview, now you know how, the, how well the fit, uh, the person fits for the, against the job description. You decide to take them, you know what areas you have to train, how much of training the person needs. So this is a... Uh, very, very important. So, you're uh, saying this is human plus AI? Absolutely. But the biggest concern is, and you know, I attended quite a few <coughs> of the AI sessions at the World Economic Forum, and they're talking about how, thanks to artificial intelligence technologies, the amount of time required to get something done, say the budgeting process That's right. or uh, the software development process, gets crunched substantially. Roshni Nadar was here yesterday, and she said that <coughs> uh, the amount of time required uh, to building a particular software is down about 70% as a result of AI. That ultimately means that you will need far fewer humans than you do at the moment and that could be a huge concern to people at TCS and everybody else watching. No, no, this is a question that's been asked by everyone but uh, I've also been talking to many other leaders here. Uh, our uh, current thinking is you take uh, every other technology advancement that's happened before. Every technology advancement increases the amount of work output that happened and thereby increase the number of people it required. It did not reduce the number of people we deployed. But if you had 100 programmers today, we may not need the same 100 progr Java programming skill set. Maybe you will need only 20 of them. The other 80 would be involved in, uh, 80 or even more would be involved in training the model 
or in terms of orchestrating the model or in terms of finding out what new products and services we can take to the client. So at this time we, are, we still believe it will be net positive in terms of uh, how many people we will need. It is not going to be net negative. So we are not concerned on workforce shrinking or the number our requirement shrinking in terms of number of people we need. What is the advice you are giving to uh, your resources at TCS and to those watching in terms of upskilling and acquiring the cutting edge new skills which can keep them relevant <coughs> in the rapidly changing job market? Multiple thing. things they can do. Like, uh, But to me, like uh, I am a fair, sort of conservative guy on this one. First of all, Whatever your core competency, if it is programming, understand the fundamentals of programming very well. Like many people, what I find nowadays is their basics are very weak. They just want to pick up one skill set for a few days and think that they have got the capability. That doesn't come. So whatever your support, if you are a programmer and computer scientist, understand that very well. Second is uh, once you in the area of artificial intelligence, there are multiple things. You can be a LLM model creator, you can be a model trainer, you can learn to do fine tuning, there are so many techniques coming. You can be a LLM model creator, you can be a model trainer, you can learn to do fine tuning, there are so many techniques coming in. Then in terms of any of uh, companies like TCS, our focus is on uh, contextualizing these technologies and ensuring that our customers get the best value out of the technology. So understand the customer context. Where would this te technology help the customer either in terms of productivity or you spoke in terms of reducing the uh, amount, amount of time involved in doing a particular activity or what new product, new services, what, how do you drive the top line. So you, we should think in terms, from the perspective of the customer, how this technology can be used. So you know, either you, you can be a, a, say increase your technical capability, you can also look at how do you use this technology to drive more benefit to the customer. So opportunity is immense. I want to spend some time talking about uh, the trends in artificial intelligence you see from here on. There's a big debate raging in the different sessions of the World Economic Forum about uh, large language models and whether they will keep uh, transforming their capabilities massively or have they been able to scar all the publicly available data on online and on the internet and therefore have they reached a certain level of maturity and a saturation and a plateau. So where do you come out on this? Do you see massive transformative changes in what people should expect from AI in 2025 or do you think it's kind of reached a level of plateau in terms of its capabilities? See the LLM per se, what's happening is they are all using the same transformer technology and uh, we are achieving more uh, in, or seeing more intelligence by massive training or increasing the number of parameters. To me both of them will hit a plateau sometime or other or because after that, like, if you have billions of parameters, you are not, even by ha having few more billions of parameters, the intelligence or the response is not going to change itself. But the value you can, so the value can come today, it's mostly text-based. From text-based, video-based, you gain more intelligence. On, so multimodal is going to increase the level of intelligence and increase the level of insights you get. So those kind of techn technological advances not necessarily in the LLM technology itself but how you leverage this technology can bring in new value. But uh, over, over a period of time this will, this should uh, plateau on in terms of uh, in the, if as long as it is based on this transformer technology. Somebody can come up with something else that could be a bigger breakthrough. One of the critiques uh, we hear often about Indian IT companies is that they are spending so much time working on use cases of artificial intelligence, making India in some ways the use case capital rather than trying to attempt to have the audacity to be at the very cutting edge of the development of large language models, they are content with being the use case capital of the world. How do you look at this? As an industry to, leader, to how me, do you look to at me, this? To me, it is uh, evolution, Rahul. Like uh, uh, Silicon Valley has had a head start of so many years. So over a period of time that uh, they have this advantage like uh, it's not the individuals, the whole ecosystem, how they look at, how they want to be up approaching innovation. And India has grown like a services economy for a long period of time. But now after so many years, you see so many startups coming up, uh, very interesting products coming up. Uh, to me, it's uh, two aspects. One is question of time. Two. People's risk-taking ability also improves. You, you keep talking about LLMs, right? For every 100 people that try to develop LLM, only one or two would succeed. 
but uh, how many people would be ready for that kind of risk and uh, so as i said it's a uh, evolution like uh, i will not be too worried about why only llms are being developed in the western world not in india like there are some people like uh, developing llms in india trying to do in indic languages so much happens but uh, it's a uh, as i said to me it's a uh, evolution and it will happen so you're partnering with nvidia do you want to take our viewers through uh, how that works and how it's likely to play out so nvidia is uh, Uh, as you, you just mentioned some time ago, like uh, all our in, we, we, the use cases, uh, our strength is uh, take uh, looking at what is for instance manufacturing. Manufacturing industry uses uh, artificial intelligence in a big way, and uh, right from uh, autonomous car uh, driving, testing those cars, and so many areas. Now, how do we leverage the NVIDIA chip using the software uh, platform provided by them? and how does a solution uh, be, be bring in the efficiency for our end customers using the nvidia chip so that is what we are our job is in stitching these two ends so that's where we work and uh, we have been developing solutions across multiple industries thank you very much i hope i didn't freeze you no no uh, <laughs> it's very really good time and joining us thank you thank you thank you take sir care. take care